Our country wasn't founded on the right of happiness, but rather the right to pursue happiness. That right is what makes America the greatest nation the world has ever known. Gavin DeGraw, The Pursuit. Boo! <laughs> Bang! Hey folks, I'm John Rich and welcome to The Pursuit. What makes music truly great? What makes it connect to the listener? Why do some songs and artists rise head and shoulders above the rest? I think the word we're looking for is authenticity. Gavin DeGraw grew up with hardworking, patriotic parents in a household filled with music in the heart of the Catskill Mountains. He's never been one of those rock star types you hear about living large and showing off, but rather focused his attention on writing, producing, and performing songs with integrity that are real to him and therefore real to his audience. The pursuit of happiness and excellence is part of this man's DNA. And as far as I'm concerned, no one can move you with a lyric and melody more than this great American artist, Gavin DeGraw. Gavin, welcome to the wow, show. John. Welcome to my house. Wow, man. It's good to see you. Same to you, bro. Thank you, man. So, Thank growing you, up man. in the Catskills, I've been up yes, there. Yep. It's part of Appalachia. What was it like growing up around there with your family and, and up there in the hills? It's, uh, Are you a hillbilly? You a northern hillbilly? I'm, uh, yeah, I'd say I'm good. At least, at least what you would call half a hillbilly. Yeah. Yeah. Half and, a hill. Uh, oh yeah. So the Catskills, where I grew up, was uh, basically the story. Dirty Dancing comes from my area, all around my area, mm -hmm. literally surrounding me. So because the economy had died off, the state of New York built prisons in my hometown. So there were three prisons in my hometown. And to simplify it, I grew up in the prison town era of the dirty dancing area. Wow. I right? Mean, what a, what a 180. 180, man. Big time 180. I mean, from big music, entertainment, movies being made to... Oh, yeah. Now we have three giant prisons. Ex exactly. Wow. Three prisons. Dad was a prison guard. He became a prison guard. His brother, my uncle, was a prison guard. Uh, my mom's brother was prison psych. And I grew up with some other kids who, you know, their dads were guards or inmates. Mm -hmm. You had this... Uh, so a portion of the local overtone of the area was you got inmates and officers progeny, you know, going to the same facility, mm -hmm. public school. Right. Together, you know, socializing, whether they know it or not, what someone else's father does. Sounds, uh, it's a tough atmosphere to be in. Yeah, plus uh, the whole element of the coming of age of being a man mm -hmm. and yeah. what's expected of you or what you're not um, perhaps performing, a level you're mm -hmm. not performing at, plus our attempt to pursue our dream you know, and, you, mm -hmm. and you, you thought to yourself, oh, I had other potential, I could have done other things a lot. Perhaps that would, would have been more of a guarantee of making a good living, mm -hmm. but I fell in love with music. Music is my drug, music is my passion, music is my hobby. I dream about songs, I dream <laughs> melodies. I wake up dreaming songs. I literally wake up dreaming songs. I dream music that I've never mm -hmm. heard before. Right. And um, Yeah, that's happened to me. Right? It's happened, absolutely. So it finds it's the way thing and it's you, stuck in your brain like, what is this? You that, better put it down. That's exactly right. And you yeah. realize that you're designed to really pursue this this passion of yours. Which and, is intangible. Yeah. It's not a physical place you can go. That's right. When a lot of people ask me my, how do I define music? I tell them music is magic because music is something you cannot see and you cannot touch, but you can feel it. I know that you had a lot of guys uh, and ladies that served in the military mm -hmm. all the way back to your grandpa, right? Oh yeah. What would uh, you call him? What was his name? Papa Russell. Papa Russell. Papa Russell, yeah. He, uh, he was WW2 vet. He was a... Uh, a messenger and radio man. So if you had leg speed, they made you run messages, right? Mm -hmm. So they'd say, here, Russ, they're shooting at us. We might die. Take this letter. Radio's not working. Run across that field. And run across the field, we'll cover you, you know? And uh, Wow, so I bet he got fast. 
He got fast. Lightning, man. So yeah. I, I, we have that in common. I didn't know yeah. this about you until recently. That you yeah. had a grande that, that yeah. was that meant that much to you that you were around because oh, yeah. I had the same thing. Pat yeah. Paul Rich is what we called him. Great. World War II guy. Great. Lied about his age. He was 17. He, he said he was 18. He went in and they turned him in what they call a tunnel rat. Mm. Five foot two, 110 pounds, somewhere in that range. Mm. And his job was to go into the cave and flush the Japanese out the other side of the cave. Incredible. So he had a short range flamethrower and a grenade belt. And he would just go into this hole and, and keep going until he got to the other side. And I brought something for you to look at. That That is his World War II uniform from the early 1940s. That, that is... when, when he died, that, that became mine. Amazing. And so I keep Amazing. it on display. Amazing. Because first of all, you're not going to see too many actual World War II uniforms. That thing's approaching you got that right. 100 years one of these days. But it just reminds me of the sacrifice that That's men right. and women have given since the beginning of our country. So no guys like that. me and you can go play music and That's chase it. our American dream. That's where it started, right That's there. It. That's why we still have That's it. That's exactly right, man. Papa Russell and my granddaddy, they would have been good buddies. Yeah, it takes a warrior to make a poet, you know what I mean?